about myself, um, I work with Fruition Partners. I am a business analyst and a certified process design engineer. And today we're going to be going over ITIL and Agile. Um, you know, I'm, I'm finishing up a project with a very large client where we're actually working on integrating these two things. And I want to talk to you a little bit, maybe clear up some misconceptions people have about, you know, ITIL and Agile maybe being mutually exclusive, which I personally feel is, is definitely not the case. Um, so to start, you know, if my keypad will work, all right, there we go. Um, we'll start with a little bit of a, a history of Fruition Partners. I'll tell you a bit about the company, how we started, what we do. Um, we'll go through an agenda of the uh, of the webinar. And a couple of quick notes. We are recording this, so it will be available on our website after we uh, clean up the recording a little bit. It should be available there at the beginning uh, beginning to middle of next week. And also, if you have questions, feel free to ask them at any time. Um, and they'll be logged in a little question uh, Q&A box that I'll have access to at the end of the webinar. And I'll save you know, 10 to 15 minutes or so at the end to answer those questions. So ask them at any point in time, um, but I won't be responding to them till the end of the webinar. So a brief history as far as Fruition Partners, we are an IT service management consulting and education company. We work uh, primarily in the U.S., but also have our toe uh, in the international waters just a little bit. We were founded seven, well, I guess eight years ago now that it's 2011, um, and actually started in the financial services space and then have spread out to legal, mobile media. We're actually you know, industry agnostic. And as a company, we've experienced tremendous growth over the last couple of years. Um, everybody that works for fruition is a certified ITIL professional, um, anything from foundations up to service manager or ITIL experts. And then we have people like myself that have some uh, variant ITIL-centric degrees within the company uh, geared more towards process design. And what fruition really focuses on is complete IT service management integration. So we like to start with education either from a ServiceNow, um, which is a service management tool that, that we implement, start with service, ServiceNow training or ITIL V3 Foundations training. Um, we can do administration of your ServiceNow instance or uh, some high-level coaching for your ITSM initiatives. And then we work to basically customize um, either the tool or your ITSM program to really meet the, the cultural needs of your organization. And with those three things, we like to really think of ourselves as an IT service management one-stop shop. So you can get your training, your consulting, um, your implementation, your integration work all done through us. And that gets us into the agenda. So what are we going to be talking about today? Um, you know, the webinar is ITIL and Agile, uh, you know, complementary frameworks. So I'm going to go a little bit uh, high level on ITIL, you know, running IT as a business, kind of the, the value that ITIL can bring. We'll go a little bit over Agile, um, very high-level overview, and then we'll talk a bit about Agile and ITSM um, integration. And, you know, just a note on this, I am certified in ITIL. Uh, my experience with Agile is, is all on-the-job training, so I'm not a scrum master. Um, you know, I don't have uh, necessarily the, the authoritative knowledge as, as somebody that would have gone through all the, the official training, um, but I have spent the last year working on integrating these two frameworks, so it feels that I can speak fairly intelligently about it. So ITIL, running IT is a business, and that's really what ITIL is focused on, is, is aligning IT initiatives with, with business goals and, and keeping everybody one big happy family. So a good way to think about IT service management or ITIL is there's kind of two distinct camps. There's the, the business and, and IT. And what the business is concerned about, they're looking at applications, desktops, servers, the network, um, you know, anything related to that. And that's a nice little diagram as far as what IT's view of the world is. So specialized by platform, function, um, systems or components. And then what the business perspective is, you know, they just see messaging. So they, they want to know that they can send an email. Uh, make a call on their BlackBerry, you know, send an instant message to Joe in marketing. So they really see the, the front end of all the technical work that everybody does. And what ITIL and IT service management strives to do is really bridge the gap between those disparate viewpoints. Um, 
and when you can kind of bridge that gap and get everybody speaking the same language, you can really work to improve your operational processes and do some pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, another big thing that ITIL is focused on is knowledge sharing, a shared dialogue. So a lot of times what we'll see is you, know, you have all this tribal knowledge in your organization. So it exists kind of ethereally in Joe's head or Sue's head. Um, and really what that leads to, is there's an ineffective use of organizational knowledge. So there's a lot of single points of failure. You know, Joe is out sick and application X fails. He may be the only one that knows how to fix it. Um, that leads to operational work being not repeatable because certain tasks, certain relationships are only known by certain people in the organization. And you know, that also leads to unknown application or service dependencies. So maybe you don't know that your billing app is running on the same database as your CRM. So you make an update to CRM and shut down the database and all of a sudden you can't send out any of your bills for the month, which would be a really bad thing. So what you want to try to focus on is collecting and storing all that information and then making it repeatable, accessible, and standardized. So you take all that tribal knowledge, you create uh, you know, a knowledge management application. So you store your standard operating procedures, all your metrics, everything like that. Um, for the operational work, you standardize and document all your workflows. So somebody gets hired onto the service desk or as a change management analyst, they can look at some documentation and say, all right, I know that when this comes in, I take these five steps, and if I can't fix it, then I escalate it to you know the tier two group or the server group or anything like that. And then you also want to look at mapping out your application um, and service dependencies, and we refer to this as business service mapping. Um, you'll probably hear me refer to this as as BSMs throughout the presentation, um, and that is kind of at a high level a lot of things that, that ITIL will, will focus on. So standardizing the processes, sharing the knowledge, mapping out the relationships, and creating kind of a, an integrated approach to both the IT and the, and the business. Um, and like I said, this is, this is very high level. So we'll get into a little bit as far as Agile. Um, so a high level overview of, of Agile is that it's focused on iterative development. Uh, a lot of times deliverables almost always are done every two weeks. Or, or one month, there's a very flat structure um, you know, within your team. So you may have, and typically do have, uh, a project manager, a couple of developers, a uh, you know, quality assurance analyst, and a business analyst all on the same team. There's not a lot of titles. Everybody kind of works in conjunction, um, everything like that. Requirements are, are constantly in flux because there's uh, kind of this cycle of define, prioritize, build, test, and implement and you may be going through your development cycle and all of a sudden there is a new critical uh, piece of functionality that is essential for go live or essential for a product that you're launching and to meet that need you know that will take priority over some existing requirements and those may be slip into what uh, in the agile community is, is termed the backlog and that kind of leads to the last bullet point which is prioritize 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 there's always this this churn basically of requirements coming in the scope or going out of the backlog and it's a, it's a, a constant negotiation and what are some of the benefits of going with an agile methodology um, one of the biggest ones is that there's there is a decreased time to market when you're delivering um, services or applications or or anything every two weeks and there's always that incremental uh, incremental move forward you can get a lot of, of product out the door quickly. Um, it's focused on producing something complete, not necessarily meeting a deadline. So your application or your go live date may shift if there's something critical path that needs to be included in the release. Um, and it's a very user-centric approach. So you're constantly working with your product owner or your, or your customer to make sure you're delivering exactly what they're looking for. Uh, some of the risks of this, because there is such a iterative loop of requirements coming in, going out, being delivered, being developed, is that a lot of times, based on just the volume of work, testing can sometimes fall off the map. What we see a lot of is this will lead to very little lead time 
for IT operations, so the people in your your NOC or your SOC, um, you know, your change change engineers, release engineers, sometimes don't get as much time as necessary to to really do their job as, as thoroughly as possible. There's always kind of that, that time crunch, um, and with the the constant cycle, configuration management is really difficult to do. Configuration management is difficult to do um, in any organization, but in agile in an agile organization, I, I've seen that it is uh, there's some additional challenges. And really, this is this is the fun part of the webinar. This is agile and ITSM working together. Um, Really, they are complementary frameworks, and they can enable rapid and stable change if done well. So, like we were talking about earlier, what are some of the values of of being in an agile framework? As, as agility increases, you know, there's an increased business value. There's a decreased time to market, and the the product that you are pushing out is very adaptable. Things can shift, change, etc on a dime. And in a lot of ways, this is really, really good. This provides a lot of value to your customers, um, be it internal or external. But a lot of times what you'll see is that the stability of your overall environment will go down to really, really to the adaptability um, of the Agile framework. So where the, the happy little marriage of Agile and ITSM comes along is when you increase your ITIL maturity, um, you know the value there is you get repeatable processes, you get standardization, you get reliable service, so you know kind of the capacity that you can deliver um, the the goods or services that you've promised, and this all in turn leads really to offering increased services to your customers. So as your ITIL maturity or IT service management maturity increases, you know stability will inevitably increase. And ideally, what you want to be doing is you want to be operating up here in this ideal state where you're highly agile, but also highly mature. Um, and an important thing to note, and in particular to the to the ITIL framework, is that you know ITIL is a framework; it is not prescriptive, um, and all that ITIL says, as far as your development methodology goes, is that there should be one in place. So ITIL as a framework it doesn't care if you're doing, you know. RUP or waterfall or agile or extreme programming or anything you know anything else as long as there is a software development life cycle in place um, you know the ITIL gods are happy so I, I just want to emphasize emphasize that part uh, very explicitly because that I think in the agile world you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of reticence that ITIL is, is really only focused on maybe a waterfall methodology where there's a lot of definition and checkpoints and milestones and things like that. And it, it really isn't the case. ITIL just cares that there is an SDLC in place. Um, and then we get into Agile and IT service management alignment. And really what I want to drive home here is, is there's, no com there's no real competition between agile, uh, an Agile methodology and, and the ITIL framework. And you can kind of see by this, uh, you know, the, the Agile ITSM circle of life here that, you know, Agile is, is focused on envisioning new products, defining them, developing them, de testing them, and then at the at the deployment piece, you know, at the, the stage where you're actually pushing your product live, that's where the, the true benefits of ITIL kind of come in and take place. So, you know, ITIL is ensuring that you can operate seamlessly, you can measure the, you know, all sorts of data on what, on whatever your product is. So if it's, you know, how many transactions per hour, per week, per month, per year, you can, you can capture that. If it's how available the application is, you know, if you're in financial services and you really need to, to track latency of an application, you know, ITIL is, is, is focused on, on measuring all that data. And, you know, it's also very focused on on incident management, on fixing anything that is broken, um, you know, and then taking that information as far as, you know, defects or feedback, um, you know, from a, a production application, and then improving that. And when you go from br fixing something that's broken to the improvement phase, that's where ITIL will kind of hand off to 
to the agile um, agile development methodology and say we found these six things that keep breaking in this application or this product or whatever let's figure out how we're going to make it, make it better let's figure out how we're going to fix it and then that will in turn hand off to the envisioning phase of agile and then the circle will kind of go around and around um, and I think you know I'm a big fan of this graphic because I think it does kind of encapsulate well how these two uh, how both the Agile framework and the ITIL methodology can work well together. So a couple things that I, I do want to drive home is that you know there really is no competing overlap. It's just a series of inputs and outputs to um, you know to each process. ITIL complements Agile with the addition of operational services. So like I was saying earlier, you know Agile is focused on getting something out the door, and ITIL is focused on making sure that it's maintainable, scalable, available enough, dependent enough. There's disaster recovery plans and redundancy and all that stuff is out there um, and really these 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 two things really do feed each other it's just a series of inputs and outputs just like how incident can feed an incident management process can feed problem management which could feed change management you know think about it very similarly um, you know ITIL is just feeding agile and agile is just feeding ITIL and what we'll kind of go through here is we'll outline some activities that are specifically agile you know specifically IT service management or ITIL and then things that they share so you know agile is focused on envisioning change a joint activity would be reviewing and, and approving the change so you want to release this project or you want to release this this product excuse me you know agile an agile team member and, and your IT service management teams should get together to review and approve that change you know it will then go back over to the Agile team to do the building and the testing and the development of the product of the application. It will come back over to uh, a joint team, you know, both Agile and IT service management, to do all the pre-implementation review, make sure that it's calling the right config files. There's no weird dependencies, anything like that. Um, and then the onus will be on your IT service management team to deploy the change and. Once that is done, you know, the Agile teams will be focused on really creating knowledge items where applicable. So SOPs, if there's any known errors in the application or in the code or any sort of known dependencies that you need to work around, you know, they'll be focused on, on getting all that information across to the operational team so that the product is supportable. Um, once a product goes live, both, uh, both from the Agile and ITSM side, people should be jointly involved in early life support they should both be equally interested in whatever is pushed out and then it you know we'll kind of go over to the ITSM side for the uh, the service operation making sure that the application is up and running or the product is performing as it should and then both groups will really be working to kind of share and review knowledge checking performance data checking transaction data whatever are really the kind of the key performance indicators for whatever the product is and and there should be a pretty uh, pretty frequent exchange of knowledge about whatever product you're pushing out and then you get into basically the handling of incidents work around creation if things are broken and that's all done on the, the operational or IT service management side of the house when you get into those when you discover those incidents or those problems um, that do need to be resolved you know that'll kind of go back into the circle kind of the circle of the Agile ITSM circle of life as something that is an improvement that needs to be built. So Agile will then take that and envision it, build and test the resolution, you know, go through change management, all that type of stuff. And then, again, that will be passed off to the IT service management team to deploy and operate the resolution. So again, you know, build and test improvements, do service reviews to kind of note any areas, and then IT you know, IT service management will be in, involved in, in monitoring those applications, making sure you're meeting your service level agreements or your operational level agreements. So SLAs, external, OLAs, or internal. Checking incident data, avail, avail, availability data. I apologize that I stumbled over that word. Um, all that type of stuff. And then, really, when you can marry these two framework, or when you can marry the Agile methodology and the um, 
the Agile methodology and the, the IT service management framework such as ITIL, it can really enable you to make data-driven decisions because you can collect process and data metrics. So you can collect your change metrics, your incident data, availability capacity data, how you're performing on SLAs, and, and any sort of, of defects or bugs in an application or a product. You can capture all of this. And then, like I said, we are a ServiceNow uh, implementation partner. So that's our little ServiceNow plug down there. And you can collect all that, share all that information, share all that data. And really what that will allow you to do is ideally reduce incident impact, provide proactive resolutions, um, share relationship knowledge. So where I mentioned business service mapping earlier in the presentation, you know, you can kind of start to, as you collect all this information, you can start to do trend analysis and, and look at, you know, how a certain application maybe consistently fails on you know, server X or server Y. And then you can take that type of information, consume it, and then when you're building a new, deploying that same application, you'll know not to put it on box X or box Y or anything like that. Um, knowledge management, you'll start to really kind of collect and grow a, a very robust um, source of knowledge, be it a wiki, be it SharePoint, be it whatever. Um, you start to, to gain all this information. And really the knowledge management piece is, is key to reducing incident impact because if something continues to break and somebody develops a solution, if it's only stored in their head, they're the only one that can fix it. But if it's stored in an easily accessible, shareable place, you know, if they're off in Cancun because it's February in Chicago and they want to warm up, you know, then whoever is filling in for them can can access that information. You know, another thing and a, a big thing is reducing the impact of change. So, so business service mapping, like I was talking about, was seeing the dependencies. So if you need to shut down a server or shut down a database to upload a new schema or anything like that, being able to look at database X and seeing both the upstream and downstream, you know, or parent-child relationships of everything that is going to be touched if you make a change to any configuration item that is out there. That level of maturity, that level of integration can also aid in auto automatically calculating your risk for changes. Um, you know, if you're changing a piece of functionality that is very discreet and exists only in its own little world, the, the risk of that having a systemic effect if something fails is really low. Um, if you're kind of changing the, the backbone of your network, anything really major, you know, the systemic risk of, of anything going wrong there is very high. So you can start to automatically calculate your risk and then you can also automatically record uh, relationships as they change if you get the right uh, right tool in place. And all of that really leads up to driving operational efficiency. So by collecting all this information both from a process and tool perspective, or I should say tools perspective, you know, you can collect process information, which can in turn allow you to drive process improvements. So, you know, a very common one out there is mean time to restore service. You know, how long did it take you at the beginning of the year? Let's say it took you 15 minutes. At what points of process failure or, you know, process bottlenecks can you target to, to reduce that time? Um, you know, in the case of maybe change management, workflow automation. So based on what's selected, um, you know, you can automatically route the change ticket to the appropriate or applicable group. You know, and then workflow in integration. So how do these basically operational workflows feed one another? And if you can get your, your systems talking to one another and sharing the applicable data, you can really start to automate a lot of stuff. Um, automate and, and integrate a lot of stuff. And this kind of comes full circle. This is the, the field of dreams piece right here. This is kind of running IT as a business, full IT service management integration as enabled by kind of ITIL and Agile. So, you know, you have all of your kind of operational processes. You have your incidents, you have your requests for new products, new servers, new hardware, et cetera. You have all the changes that come in. You have your 
IT projects that are going on. You have your maintenance that needs to happen, all the assets you need to track. Um, and then you kind of have your operational teams lined up here. So you have your service desk, your network operations center, your service operations center, however you refer to it. And you have your, your engineering team, so network systems, everything like that. And you have your application development teams. And what these bars kind of illustrate is how much time these teams are, are kind of typically spending on any one of these, these kind of standardized processes. So we see that the service desk is spending a lot of time on incidents as well as the, the NOC is spending a decent amount of time on incidents, which is where they should be. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're, you know, you want to make sure all your, everybody playing on the team is, is playing in the, you know, the correct position. And with all these disparate sy systems without integration, without automation, without, you know, processes or workflows feeding one another, you really kind of start to get this, a, a disparate, disparate patchwork of automation where you know maybe groups A and B work really well well together but but group C is kind of off there doing their own thing um, and there's not that level of transparency you know, you'll get manual requests for services or you'll kind of get into what we talk about is like the, the gray market economy where you know somebody on the network team so you just chat with them in the lunchroom and get them to you know upgrade the firmware on your router kind of you know under the table, things of that nature. Processes are ad hoc. You just kind of make something up to, to get the job done. And there's no kind of single single point of truth. You have information stored all over the place. And what all of these things kind of try to illustrate is you, know, you have your service management tool. You have your messaging applications. You have email, your project management software. And you want to get a IT service management tool or platform uh, or anything really in place to kind of consume all of this data. And then once you can kind of consume that data and you can create some key performance indicators, some metrics that you're starting to track and manage, you can start to drive some of that operational efficiency um, through service management. And then you can start to integrate and automate your workflows, your requests, your processes, your dashboards, you know, can kind of do a whole lot of a whole lot of really cool stuff once all the teams, tools, groups and organizational units are kind of working as one. Um, and you know, that is really the the lion's share of what I wanted to cover. So I'm gonna open it up to questions right now. Uh, a couple things I, I do want to go over. Um, before I, I jump into the questions is, you know, Fruition Partners is doing the, the social media thing. So you can follow us on Twitter. Um, our handle is at Fruition Partner. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Fruition Partners. We're also on LinkedIn at, you know, company backslash Fruition Partners. I personally am also on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, my, my handle is rph underscore fruition. Um, most of the stuff I, I post up there is, is ITIL, um, ITIL related, so can be a good source. And I'm going to go over and check out the questions. So give me just one second to... So the question is, how is build and test not part of the ITSM framework? Is it not that ITSM is the management guidelines and agile is is development um, so itsm is it's a very excellent question and itsm is focused more so on the the governance on on managing and governing the kind of the holistic picture of it um, and what agile gets into is is the detailed methods so how you are going to execute your test plans all of that type of stuff is, is where Agile comes in, and ITSM is there to really say, testing needs to happen, we need to look at this key stuff. Um, so ITSM is doing the governing, and, and the Agile methodology is doing the, the detailed methods. Um, and that was I, looking like that's the 
the only question that that was raised at this point in time um, did I uh, to the person that, that asked it, did I, did I answer it fully enough? Is there anything kind of extraneous, outstanding that you'd like me to dig into a little bit more? Or does, does anybody else out there have any questions? Um, so is the next question that came up is, is there a specific tool available in the market for both Agile and IT service management? Um, and is there one that is, is open source? Um, as far as the open source piece, I, I am not aware of anything. Um, you know, what I would say um, is that ServiceNow can kind of scratch that itch, so to speak. Um, or you can work at, you know, integrating whatever your IT service management tool is with your development tool. Um, but ServiceNow does have some agile applications. They are doing some pretty cool stuff with runbook automation and, and automating the, the application release process. Um, so it definitely is worth looking into. Um, uh, so this is a very easy question. What is my Twitter name again? Um, that's simple to answer. It's it's R P H, um, so that's Ryan Patrick Hale, underscore fruition. Um, so I'm actually on there fairly frequently, posted a couple times a day to try to share cool articles or you know other good webinars or initiatives that I see out there. Um, and you know, I'm a big Twitter fan. I know people are typically in one of two camps, but I'm in the I'm in the go Twitter camp. Um, is there any other questions at this point in time? Otherwise, uh, what I'll plan on doing is ending this a little bit short. That way everybody can kind of wrap up their lunch hour with their with their own personal time, not not doing work related stuff. Um, and like I said, both the, the recording of this webinar um, and, and potentially the slide deck will be available on our website by early to mid next week. And we'll also be sending out a, a follow-up email to everybody that has registered for the webinar so you can get a link, um, you know, get a link to the website with the recording and, and make life really easy. So on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and end it. Thanks a lot for everybody that participated. Um, some really, really good questions. Um, and the last one, I guess one more did, did come up. Um, it says it's really a hot topic in um, current a uh, asset lifecycle management processes. I, I wasn't quite sure if that was a statement or a question. Um, you know, as a statement, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the agile, uh, agile methodology and, and managing that, uh, you know, managing IT as a service, um, you know, agile can put some strains on, on asset management, uh, most certainly. So, integrating that from either a process or a tool perspective, is, is definitely something that I see, as not only a hot topic but also a kind of a growing area, um, in the marketplace. So I, I couldn't agree more if that's a statement. Um, if it's a question, I'm not quite sure what the question was. So if there isn't anything else, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Thanks a lot for participating, everybody. And um, you know, we do definitely appreciate, appreciate everybody's attendance.